Hello everyone. Today's talk is titled, Working with the Flows of Your Understanding. And what that immediately implies is that we each have our own way of understanding things. And when we do things, it's like the application of what we know to what needs to be done. As we get involved in the act, we suddenly find that sometimes the act is challenged because we're exerting force. It's like that moment when you're uh, pushing, for example, uh, creating the eye socket of a snowman, for example, you begin to see that your finger is pushing through and affecting it. So the more intention you have in doing something, the more application is done. And so you see the more you're understanding because the more there's engagement, the more change is happening. So now, psychology has made us believe that we are ideas that cannot see ourselves. However, psychology is just interpretation, and so sometimes you get interpreters that aren't good interpreters. And so who is the best interpreter? It is you. Because the only understanding that is valuable is one that originates from all the imagery you know, not any imagery someone else says. What that means is if, you, if you've been someone who's, for example, lived in, let's say, New York, and you're that kind of person, suddenly uh, attitudes of, let's say, poor and spiritual practice might not resonate with you. But you must understand that all practice is done with an intention to change something. And so that intention to change can happen for anyone. That means you don't need the practice to achieve the outcome you need the awareness to why the practice is being done and so your eyes will perceive the principle in what you are doing. And so the flows of your understanding and working with it is really actually you recognizing that when you are engaging something and you know how to do it, you are involved. It's as if it's going on its own. It's like that master craftsman uh, uh, went hours and hours feeling as if he was just working one minute. Great things have come with man's focus uh, in on things other people have not seen. We have different types of explorers in this reality. We have certain explorers that tune down, and so they're noticing the details that are happening in a certain proximity. And there are others who have no idea what's happening around them, but they are, they are great pillars. It's as if they are here to show man of his vertical uh, dimensions of intelligence, when his whole life he's been thinking is horizontal. And so physical expression or how physicality is being handled by you does not show who you really are. It just shows how your awareness is aware of the changes happening in, in, in the physical reality at that point. I want you to visualize that perhaps a mathematics professor in MIT, you know, just visualize that kind of person waking up and going to do what he has to do. Visualize now also at the same time a very religious, uh, spiritual type of monk person also waking up in the morning, you know, and now visualize a businessman, a CEO who is the inspiration of why uh, people on Wall Street do cocaine. Visualize all these people, all these human beings, and see that what they are fundamentally uh, working with is how, what they are in a sense, what they have in common, what they have in common is actually how their eyes and their world are being engaged. By looking at these people, we simply see... By looking at these people, we simply see that every one of them has some sort of understanding. And this understanding has made them apply themselves to life for different outcomes. So human life is being handled by what it perceives itself going towards. So you 
not seeing where you're going or not in a sense being aware of where you are to become aware of where you're going is as if you are thrown in a river and you have no idea you're in a river. It's very important to become aware of a river and see that, okay, I can't assume that I'm not in a river. There's too much change, existential change happening around me, you know? So as there is so much change, our certainty fades away. It's as if the legs of our chair have just, in a sense, uh, dematerialized. Our certainty is not something that... can be found with, with image, because all image is comparatively being understood. I really want to make it clear that, for example, that MIT professor, he goes on throughout his life living with some form of cultural acceptance and social behavior and etiquette, and as he is moving through these structures of how he should be in a certain social setting, sometimes going too much in a structure, it feels like you're going in a cave, but the cave, instead of just being, you know, very random how caves normally are, but just kind of like labyrinth-like, you know? You will see that if you, if you choose to consider yourself to be the, the most smartest person here, and when I say this, this is not externally, this is, a, this has, this is as if you are assuming an identity which is real for you, but you're not recognizing that identity is not you. You are just identifying with it. So similarly, when the self-talk stops creating uh, such value in objective reality, we are put in a state where clarity becomes our lack of engagement. So if I was right now present here, and let's say the apocalypse was happening, I would recognize that regardless of the change, it's my awareness to the change that is here. So for example, regardless of how much the world, you know, happens anything, the changes to my experience is my proximity, it's my bubble of awareness, you know? So, in other words, what I'm trying to say is that I would perhaps, on the end of, on the day, uh, on the day where all endings are going to begin, I would sit down, breathe, and absorb myself in the change. So what that means is that many of us are associating with fixed objectivity. It's as if you're, you're associating with the structures, not the wind between the structures. When you associate with the wind between the structures, your existential confrontation is looking at itself to a point that it knows itself through a greater knowing. That greater knowing comes across as a flow. So, <laughs> I want to take you guys from a, an apocalyptic, apocalyptic scene into how regularly there is a flow. That MIT professor is carrying on his day, is doing certain things, and he might think he's a genius, but if he looks at how he's been living, routine perhaps has limited time for genius. Routine perhaps has made you think that your ambitions need to wait. You can't have dreams because you need to fund a temporal object. Do not be one of those people who does not embrace other people. Do not be a person who you think you're more than another human being. Your humanity may have a different form and this form may have a different value in how there are classes in our, in our <clears throat> let's say, uh, financial and governmental systems, but it's very important to see that man is alive and so existence is holy. So you must not think just the Dalai Lama is holy, is his holiness. You must think everything that exists is holiness. And if you're someone who perhaps the imagery of holiness does not resonate with you, it's just imagery. Make it a panda bear, you know? Just, just, just recognize that your relationship with life requires a clarity that allows you. So what that means is certain times, let's say, 
many people think that our thinking is only occurring in this reality. No, we are simultaneously present. Every memory you have is existing uh, vertically regardless of its horizontal time. So what that means is if we had, let's say, a point A to B, and we just had a horizontal line from point A to B, if every dot in that line also had a vertical, we would say that it is only our focus that is creating the experience of time. And so as man is finding uh, himself to be a greater being, he also recognizes that by assuming that he is a greater being from his environment, the dynamics of the world will show greater beings communicating to man. So man will recognize that the fact that he has an ability to distinguish things is creating his world in a subtler plane. And if he's not clear on what is being built internally, externality will be very, very... Uh, it would be an uncomfortable cage, but a cage that you can instantly open if you choose to. Because when the bird has an ability to see itself in a cage and to see itself outside, it, it exists in both, both potentials. It's just that the minute it has acknowledged uh, the size of the spectrum, a new spectrum is initiating. Because you, you must see that the act of comparison has a novelty in it. You, it's as if you didn't accept just A, you're moving to B. So as you're moving to... Uh, as you're moving chronologically, you must realize that it is creating simultaneous reality for you. In the sense that sometimes I have, let's say if, if I have been distracted here, you know, I would go into my memory, I would perceive myself in, let's say, uh, let's say when I, was very, uh, when I was young and I was somewhere in nature, you know, and I would originate my thinking conception from there. So I, I, it, it's as if I, your experience can be very vast the moment you're aware of its dimensions. And multidimensionality is not a linear thing. So the greatest thing that man needs to learn is actually the, to understand that the flows of understanding are not presented through separate thinking. Separate thinking has been just like one technology in place. It's as if they said there were uh, many technologies um, for the plane. You know, it's as if, not for the plane, but just there were many methods for flight and the plane was one of them. And so some of those methods became lost technologies because they weren't pursued. So similarly, it's as if our separate thinking and our years and years as human beings adjusting to this has, has brought a sense of confusion because it is not working now. We're realizing, oh my God, the people, the human beings before us were grumpy. They're still grumpy, right? And grumpy people, how much are they going to kill? They're grumpy. So you need to kind of see that the way you're acknowledging your sense of space and time are suggesting how present you are aware of all understanding, which comes to a clear vision itself, which is again transparent and transcendental in nature. And this is not a joke. So what that means is when I heard, for example, the concept of transcendental meditation, I was like, ooh, what is that? Is that, is that? You know, it was very interesting for me. But then I realized it's transcendent. is not like that. It's transcendent is the fact that you're acknowledging your memory and everything you're aware of so directly. It's as if you're, you've suddenly become that CEO who's checking every memory to see exactly what you are. And as you become aware in that way, You will see infinity never suggested limitation. And there never was limitation, but just how you were tuning into a certain range of manifestation based on the duality that even conceived the sense of self to compare things to. Ideology is something where you are having your own relationship and there is no one who can tell you better than how you know yourself what to do. 
The only time you must go to someone else is when you feel you don't have the knowledge, the external knowledge. For example, you don't know the idea, you don't know the concept, and the minute the concept is introduced, if you're wise, you will engage your direct experience. So the minute when someone's explaining to me some stuff, uh, I would, it's as if uh, my whole memory begins to listen. It's as if every sense of self ever is presently listening. However, this is, again, in an image way, how I'm communicating. This is all uh, transparent. That means I, there is no thought. It's actually very silent in my experience. It's very empty. When I say empty, it's not that there's nothing. I'm seeing things, but there isn't that noise. That noise and thought. That self-talk. It, but it's as if, you know, there was a phase where there was a lot of self-talk and gosh, uh, those were misty days. But after the self-talk, the self-talk kind of moved and it became silent as I became more gentler and calmer. And then it, 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 it began stopping as if like, uh, like a... It began taking leap, so what that means is suddenly I would be very calm and this would then suddenly I'd be very agitated, but then suddenly calm. And again, the agitation suddenly fell apart. It's as if every day that I was aware of my calmness, the, the thoughts of anger, the, the stuff all, fa- all faded. Now, as it faded, it reached a point where it did come to a sense of my silence. Where I would naturally, I would wake up in the morning, just sit on the porch, on the yard, and just just simply observe things and in a sense be present with all of it. And there was no thought, no idea, just, just this kind of, I don't want to even say warmth, just this feeling, you know? This feeling where I just like, uh, my hands were, let's say, uh, just on my legs, I, I, it's as if it, I, I didn't, there wasn't a distinction of body in the sense of hands. It's as if, 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 I, if I didn't move then, I wouldn't be bothered at all, because I was finding a sense of freedom of movement through a lack of non- uh, n- uh, through a lack of objectivity, let's say. Kind of. So what I'm trying to say is that afterwards you go to that silent way, it's as if your understanding was first based on the illusion of who you thought you were and the thinker. But as you're becoming aware of more of this existential intelligence that you are, th- those programs begin to fade. Because it's as if you've reached the part of the program where everything was waiting for you to be like, okay, I want to look deeper. I want to I see the hidden depths. And so the hidden depths of every single form of conception is your birthday. Because in its hidden depths you will find the greatest eyes that belong to life. And guys, after you become silent, you will see that your self-awareness shifts so that your values weren't the same. So suddenly it's like, you know how sometimes, uh, let me say it like this, you have work tomorrow, there's a nice party going on, a situation many human beings are confronting. And so as as, uh, <laughs> you see the decision there can be one where you value the moment for its experience or you value what you're going to achieve uh, in, in very segmented forms. It's not, so what you're planning for the future, in another moment there's no space and time, you're just like, hey, you party. You know? so it's very important to see that similarly when we look at thought and when we look at the thinker and simply who is thinking, if we choose to think and assume we're a thinker and nothing else, uh, you will see that it's as if you're not trying to, you can't find the thinker. It's as if that moment where you're trying to look where your thoughts are originating from, you cannot find it unless you associate with it. So uh, true existential awareness and intelligence comes from uh, not just association, but dissociation and the transparent observance of both. Because this transparency is like that moment where the silence is in there, but then, because you're so silent, you begin hear, hearing things that you've never heard before. It's as if your attention begins picking up things that you never felt. It's as if your reflexes suddenly become much clearer because your peripheral is not changed. You know, your peripheral vision is changed. I like to see human beings be able. I'm recognizing that that, abili- that ability mainly comes from yourself. It's a gift you give to yourself. You, you don't find this with it. Because there's no one else who can lead you there. It is you who is even keeping that entrance open. 
Every human being is an entrance to infinity. And they know it because that is why they're here. The fact that in this vast cosmos, we have just suddenly uh, manifested into this individuality in which one man is walking in a park and recording a talk, it's a very huge thing, you know? It's as if we are, we are the handicraft of the universe. And so this handicraft is being designed very interestingly. Many people think the concept of, oh, there are creators, there's alien uh, geneticists or some, some stuff like that, but that is your understanding as an idea, and there will be, unless you understand your true nature. Your true nature does not mean that imagery does not exist. Your true nature means your awareness to imagery makes you untouched. That means just like how you know where your house is, you, that certainty is, is so much more intense and real uh, because then if someone comes up to you and he's like, hey man, where's your house? You know? And you say, uh, or let's say someone's in front of your house and someone says, that's not your house. And you're like, that's my house. You know, and you see the intensity of your action. The minute you're certain about what is real, your ability flows out. And so that is when you're truly working with the flows of your understanding. You must see that you have created values in life based on individuality. These individual things now are moving and in this movement you're interpreting who you are in this life. But you must realize you are not these individual values. In other words, the words in the dictionary are words that <laughs> you did not define. And so if the dictionary says that the human being is a box, do you, would, you, would you accept that? Or would you be like, okay, maybe this dictionary is a bit too heavy. I like lighter methods. You know? So you need, to, you need to recognize that you are working in self-awareness or uh, all those people interested in meditative practice. The, the focus is not to become more flexible, you know, or to, in a sense, uh, try to have some cool experience. The focus is you as existence finding yourself. It's that moment where the human gets curious about its being. And so the human being, if it becomes aware of its being first and then its humanity, is a blessing to the cosmos. But if it chooses to feed on a system that is keeping it unhealthy, then its individuality will be a burden for it. We are multidimensional creators in which co-creation has been extended forth. We are emanating co-creation based on the first spark of creation that we are. And the origin of this awareness is beyond space and time as it is the conceiver. It is that one who's who's coloring the sky, in which we think there's, it, it, you know, we think they're not colors. No, no, no. Reality is created with different directions of experience, and as these rivers come together, they find an ocean. So you will see, all understanding is leading you to a point where the temporal concept of you cannot exist because it is too absorbed by its direct experience of life. It is now time for us to wake up. I personally have talked to so many people who, if you just talk to them, they, they are brilliant people. It's as if this guy's ideas have gone so deeply that he, it's as if in, in explaining one plan, he's given solutions to many others. So it's very important to know that there are, you as a being, have your whole internal experience to give to the external world. You have your whole interpretation. And if you are not happy about your interpretation, if you think you're stressed or depressed, it is time to wake up. If we want to be sheep, we will never build this world in time for the beautiful gift that it's going to receive. It is now time for people to wake up. It is now time for you to recognize you're not just a communicator. You are an, you are an advanced communicator. Your communication is your presence. Your communication is that which is aligning your attitude within the moment to the most proper expression. Think of clarity. Update your dimensions of experience by understanding and looking at how you're working with things. Look at what you're doing. Multidimensionality is now our task. 
There are some things the newer generations understand which should be their work. No other, ge no other generation can touch it. Do you know? For example, the many kids who have many ideas on how to work with abstract models, these, these kids will, are doing their own project. And so it's that moment where you see the projection of everybody was one experience. So if you individually go towards a realization or a realized state, or what people have called enlightenment, you would see that you, are, you as an individual being are using certain imagery of something to suddenly move to a sense of nothing observant of everything. You know? And so this may be confusing now, but follow it because it's an experiential thing. It's, a, it's very unspeakable actually. And so you're not supposed to talk about it, in a sense, because if, if you do, uh, everyone has different internal dimensions. So what that means is we do see the same pen if I held a pen between me and you, but at the same time, how we recognize that to be a pen is coming from very distinct internal, uh, let's say, points of reception. For example, someone might have thrown a pen in your face, you know? <laughs> and so you see a pen, you're like, oh God, that's a weapon, you know? And perhaps someone who's never seen a pen and he's only just had paper his whole life and has been looking for a pen, suddenly sees that pen and he's like, wow, you know? So, life is here because you are. And so the most important lesson out of everything that you're doing in this life is what Mr. Within would say, self-awareness. That is the best remedy in not just getting yourself healthy, but aligning your intelligence with the intentions of your greater vision. Stop thinking there is illusion too much. Just work with the illusion and your understanding will fix everything. Your intuition will guide you. Do not not trust life. In, in, in ancient times, in ancient wisdom, it is said that there are two ways to live your life. You can open your eyes from the womb and begin seeing a world where everything is against you. And the doctor even slapped you really hard. Or you can begin seeing that everything is with you. And so this was what was not taught to me. For my whole life, I thought everything was against me, and little did I know, I was cr the way I was receiving things, I was creating those experiences for me. It's as if uh, if I, I, I was having a dirty lens, and this lens, uh, because it had dust on it based on my old ideas, it wasn't looking clearly. It wasn't, it wasn't a clear projection. A clear projection means that the minute you open your, line, open your eyes, you're, it's complete harmony. And so this is something you got to cultivate because there's a sense of harmony that I give you a snapshot of a very nice picture and there's a sense of harmony which is, for example, the progression of a movie. It is much more faster. So what that means is many of those people who go and seek meditative practice, it doesn't mean you should not... <laughs> it doesn't mean uh, you should only go sit in a cage. It simply means that the lessons you're learning based on meditation is that there is a transcendental nature to your being. The adjustment of this is how your individuality dissolves into its collective knowing. And this dissolution is where ego fades. So the roar of a lion really suggests that it's a lion. <laughs> That's how it is heard. The reason I talk very passionately about this stuff is because I'm recognizing that we have an opportunity many people didn't. But we also have more distractions than people before. So we must, not, we must slow down the changes that are not serving us or others. How you become aware of uh, stopping activities that are not serving yourself or others is by first looking at yourself deeply, by seeing what is your understanding. Is your understanding uh, a container where you've been putting ideas in? 
Or is your understanding how you look at life and simply see its meaning in all meaninglessness? The pilot of consciousness and advanced communicators will begin to see that the reason they will begin opening up to greater experiences is because they are trusting their innate knowing. So what that means is that the system that you are running is clear of the system it is, but it's also clear that it's changing. So it is not completely holding on to it. It's as if every day with every person I talk to, they are, they are seeing a new me. And so the mind of man can be a labyrinth where he is running eternally in trying to find the thinker with the, fe with the feeling that there's a creature there oh, for him to understand that the thinker was what they called back then something where they were not able to communicate. There have been many communication problems in, in, in humanity and there will be, there will of course be communication problems because regardless of how many haters you think you have or supporters, if you're someone whose work is kept, you will see that whole history will judge you because they will judge your environment. So it's very important for individual and very infinitesimal units to begin shaking the system by not thinking that they have to be giants, but to have trust in the faith that has always been wanted. Your understanding is a very beautiful thing. You are a treasure revealer when it comes to internal external experience and the observance of both of them that is unspeakable. Recognize that you are a living entity and so it is important for you to see that there is a magical quality but not in a fluffy way. The magical quality is that you are a transcendent being and so you are multidimensional. Because many Zen masters, well not many Zen masters, but there was a Zen master who he had a dream that there was a, he was a butterfly. And so the next day he just didn't know if he was a butterfly dreaming that he was a human or if it was a human dreaming that he was a butterfly. And so, you know, that is because that being had suddenly confronted his reality to a point where the Zen master's teacup was filled to the brim. And so as more was poured, it's as if the water was going into a new dimensions of experience. And so these new dimensions of experience is very important to recognize that you must establish comfort with the temporal, but not a comfort that is comparative. So I'm not saying, oh, I'm cool with this because I'm cool with this. No. If I, it's as if that silent moment where you see that nothing can touch you because you're untouched. Your awareness is the ability of the observer to move beyond sensory perception. And remember, the greatest gifts find you. Your understanding will at times open new dimensions of intelligence in the sense that you don't know, you don't recognize it, but you suddenly see you're just seeing more color in your world. Your senses have expanded. Uh, you are more aware of movement around you. When something moves, it's as if your body's already moving to adjust to it. Uh, it it's a sense of trusting life that in that allowance, there is no cage that brings that belong to the sky. <laughs> It's very important to work with the flows of your understanding and to let it be nature's blessing to you. You are understanding yourself more than an individual life process and you're seeing the life around you and realizing you're connected. Similar to how we see many, many structures connected, we find every single grass on, on a grass and holding on to the soil. We see that reality and its understanding of sharing 
and she increases in power. So for example, right now, we're asking people or other beings, other human beings, for example, to share money because it's not balanced and there's hunger. And guys, hunger is the most immediate thing that needs to be solved because more than it affects the person's physicality, it ruins the psychology. Because regardless of how much you learn or study, if you do not have food, you will feel as if your dignity is lost. And it's very important to have very, very strong communicators now, very advanced communicators. Your understanding is you and your greatest direction. Trust not yourself, but trust the self. Trust the self that is keeping everything here. Trust the awareness that you are. And when you find mystery within, you shall be your greatest smile. And that's when your understanding has always worked. Much blessings and many.